One more day to go. Yep, one more day. Then, back to my favorite planet, Earth. You know, Grant, we're gonna miss you. <laughs> sure. No, really, I mean, having a character like you around really breaks the monotony. Well, I'd love to stay, really, but... Uh... Oh, I know, you've got a hundred chicks just waiting for you to call. Well, no, let's not go overboard. 80 or 90, maybe? <laughs> Coffee. Thank you, sir. Hey. New port secure and tested. Repressurized. Sphere searched. I want the remains of that port collected from outside and reconstructed. I want the answer. Astronaut William Grant, killed in the line of duty April the 12th, 1981.
There is your answer. calculated that the projectile was fired from a group of rocks about 200 meters from the base. The chemical analysis hasn't told us much, except it's part alloy. One of the constituents is unknown on Earth. Now, you're saying that a UFO landed on the moon, undetected, and one of its occupants got out and fired this projectile at moon base. Three days ago, a particularly large stream of meteorites played havoc with our tracking system. It could have landed then. Yes, yes then just taken off again after the attack. No, the interference didn't last long enough. It's still somewhere on the moon. I've had the interceptors searching for the last 24 hours. And if they find it? My orders are seek and destroy. Hmm. When is the next lunar launch possible? At 1,400 hours tomorrow, sir. Alec? I'm going back to moon base with Commander Forster. You will assume command here. Right. Oh, and Alec, could you get me everything we've got on the disintegration of UFOs in the Earth's atmosphere? Give me 30 minutes. Commander, I want you to countermand your orders to the interceptors. Tell them to seek and observe. Yes, I know, I know. The natural reaction is to want to hit back. I like to build Grant, too. But we know that a UFO disintegrates if it stays too long on Earth. All of our evidence suggests that it has some reaction with our atmosphere. And there's no atmosphere on the moon. Exactly. This may be our best chance ever to get our hands on a UFO intact. Now look, uh, Foster, we won't be able to leave for another 23 hours. Why don't you go somewhere and unwind? Yeah, I think maybe you're right. I'll leave an address where you can contact me. I think I know where. Foster, I'll be home in time for supper. Home? Moon base.
astronauts to get those aerial photos in here fast. That's the first thing he'll ask for. The second thing, Space Tracker Harrington. The first thing is a cup of coffee. Perhaps you'd be good enough to organize that. Miss Barry. Yes, sir? I met your father about a month ago. I was happy to tell him I think you're settling in extremely well. Thank you, sir. Now, if you'd uh, ask someone to bring the aerial photographs along to the leisure sphere, please. Sir. Oh, Harrington. Well, that's with cream and sugar, please. Yes, sir. Infrared from 30,000 feet. And you say it's in there. Yes, sir. Here's a blow up. Ah, yes. There it is. How long would it take a moonmobile to get into that area? It's just below the Terminator. All right, let's set it up. I suggest we use two mobiles, a couple of men in each. Fine. Uh, who do you suggest is crew? I'd like a crack at that, sir. Thank you. Mark can handle it. He knows the area. Fine. You can choose your own navigator. Thank you, sir. Now, that just leaves the other moonmobile. I'll pick my own crewmen as well. I suggest we use a missiles operative. As moon base commander, your place is in the control sphere. Maybe, sir. But I was the one who saw Bill Grant's face as he tried to make it to that airlock. Border control. Three miles from Terminator. Roger. Soon be in darkness. Tell them to stick together. Control to mobiles. Maintain close visual contact. Roger, control. Did you hear that, Mark? Don't worry, sir. I'll be breathing down your neck all the way. Just under two miles from target. Listen, Foster, at the first sign of trouble, get the blazes out of there, and I'll send the interceptors in. Is that understood? Understood. But we won't need them. Out. be able to see them from the top of the next ridge. We'll leave the mobiles here and go in on foot. Roger. Right, let's go. sighting of UFO. Position? In the center of a crater, just as it was in the aerial shots. It hasn't moved. What does it look like? Difficult to say. But from its attitude, it could have been damaged on landing. Now what about the radiation check? Negative. It's just sitting there. Well, I suppose it's just possible it might be abandoned. There's only one way to find out. We'll move in in two minutes. 
Right. Yellow alert. All air supplies A OK. Time check. 11.04.45, now. Check. Now listen, there's a rock just over that ridge. Wait till the guy ahead of you reaches it before you come over the top. Right. Who's first in line? My privilege. I'll follow you. Then Brad and Don. Any questions? We could run into an alien out in the open. Remember, they're expendable. We want the UFO. Red alert. Interceptors, immediate launch. Program on board computer for attack. Yes, sir. Send the interceptors in, but tell them to hold their fire till I give the word. Are you okay? Yeah. Straker says to pull out. We're pinned down here. Look, I'll go get a moon mobile. What if the UFO takes off? It's a chance I've got to take. Give me two minutes. ETA target, four minutes. This is control. How soon will you be clear? Couple of minutes, sir. What's the holdup? Can you hear me? Come in, Mark. Mark! Interceptors, 90 seconds from target. Something must have gone wrong. 
Come on, let's go. The interceptor leader has visual contact. The UFO is lifting off. Order the attack. Maybe he was thrown clear. If I thought there was one chance in 10 million. It could happen. Well, you said yourself the Moonmobile was totally destroyed. No. Bad business, Alec. One Moonmobile totally destroyed. The other so badly damaged it was a miracle it made it back to base. The Moonmobiles can be replaced. And Commander Foster can't. Yes. That's one of the reasons I'm staying on here for a couple of days. A new commander will have to be appointed. I didn't mean that. I know what you meant. I feel the same way. Look, Alec, there's one thing you can do for me. 
Foster had no close relatives, but there was someone. A girl? Yes. She was as close to him as anyone. I think she should be told. All right. What's her name? Tina Duval. Apartment 19, Windermere Hall. Right. Miss Duval? Yes? My name is Alec Freeman. I'm a friend of Paul Foster. Relax, Lieutenant. Relax. I was just going to grab some sleep, sir. Yes. It's been a long 12 hours. Mark, I'm sure you realize how important this base is. It's a vital link in our defense system. Now, whoever commands it has got one of the most responsible jobs in Shadow. I'd like you to consider it, Mark. Are you offering me the job, sir? Yes. Does that surprise you? Not altogether. And does it surprise you if I say no? Well, it disappoints me. Well, you've done your duty. You've asked. And I've given you the no you wanted. What do you mean, I've done my duty? Sure. After Foster, I'm the senior man. The obvious choice, if you like. So, I offer you the command of Moonbase, and you say no. Why? I asked you why. Because of this. Oh, don't give me that racial prejudice burned itself out five years ago. How would you know? All right. On the surface, maybe. But deep down inside of people, it's still there. Maybe it will never show. And maybe it will. Like sometime I'm ordering a guy out on a mission. A time the chances are he won't be coming back. Look, I'm not offering you some easy number. And I don't care if you're a polka dot with red stripes. You're the best man for the job. Now, do you want it? Do you want it? Yes, sir. I would like it. But not like this. No one wanted it like this. No. You get some rest, Commander.
morning. I'd just like to say we're glad to have you with us, sir. Thank you very much. This is control to Moon Mobile 3. Proceed to area 183 as instructed. Yes, sir. You've sent out a mobile? Yes, sir. To the UFO crater? Yes, to look for wreckage of the UFO. I did not know I needed your permission. You don't, Commander. Carry on. Take her a couple of degrees over to port. There's a back crevasse peel about 10 miles on. We'll go round it. Right. I see what you mean. About what? That crevasse field straight ahead. Rough terrain. Oh! 
Hold it, sir. Over here! They've seen us! Hey! Hey! Come on, wake up! We're safe! They've seen us! We're okay! Bring an air cylinder, hurry! Listen! Listen! We're safe! We're safe! They found us! Now, now, you stay here! Do you understand? You stay here. There's an alien. He's back there. He saved my life. He's a friend. He's trying to say something. Yeah, his radio's US. Can't you hear me? An alien. Okay, Commander, we can't hear you. Right, let's lift him up. Don't you understand? He's a friend. Take it easy, Commander. Oh. What's he trying to oh. say? I don't oh. know. Let's get him back to the Moonmobile. Shall we carry him, sir? Hold it a minute. Listen. There's an alien. He's a friend. He saved my life. An alien! Alien? He said something about an alien! An alien? No! 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 You're right, I don't understand. I'm told you're dead, and you're alive. You walk in here as if nothing has happened. I can't take it anymore. You've always known there are things I can't tell you. About your job. But does it come before everything? Even me? Tina. I'm sorry. So am I, Paul. Buy your drink, Alec. Fine. <laughs> 